Hi, Megan. Hi, Hi first Aaron. graders. I'm so excited about Mama. this. Me too. I always love school talks and I love like the questions kids ask about weather because they are the best questions. They are. They are. Yes. Learning about weather is also tons of fun. I know yeah. that we're tight on time. I have to show you. Maya made this cloud project though. <gasps> It's so good. So Mrs. Drilling is doing a great job with everybody. We are going to get into the nitty gritty, but real quick, who the heck are we? I will tell you, Megan and I used to work together on the morning news at CBS Chicago. Here's a quick little clip of us. Oh, don't make me sit so through guys it. Okay. Oh, there's I'm going to let that play out, Megan, yeah. while you tell us who you are. Okay, so my name is Megan Glaros, and for about 15 years, I did the weather on TV. So that means I was a meteorologist. Um, and we might ask this question later, but I might as well take it now. Meteorology is the study of the weather. Um, so that's the weather around you every day. Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it raining? Um, and so someone who studies the weather is called a meteorologist. So that's what I did on TV for many, many years, um, telling right. everybody what it was like each morning. Here, here's a quick clip. Oh, jeez. Good morning, everyone. I'm Erin Kennedy. Time to get a look at our Friday. Hi, Megan. Hi there, Erin. We're looking at scattered sun and clouds uh, through most of the day. Some rain in the afternoon, 83 degrees, the high temperature. Southwesterly wind anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, partly cloudy and mild, dropping down to 63 with a northeasterly wind that'll be about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And into Saturday, it starts to... So there's Megan and Aaron back yep. at CBS Chicago. So Megan, also Megan is just the best meteorologist and <laughs> so smart. So Aaron. let's let's take some of these questions from Mrs. Drilling's class. Okay. Yeah. How do you become a meteorologist? So um, to become a meteorologist, the best way to do it is first of all to love the weather. That's one of the most important things because you want to like your job if you're going to do it. Um, but you would need to study that in school. So you would either study meteorology, which is the study of weather. Um, my degree was actually in something called atmospheric sciences, which is basically the same thing. It's the study of the atmosphere around us and how it impacts us, which is really meteorology. So mm -hmm. you would need to study that in school if you really want to understand what you're talking about. And also if you want that special specialized title. Cause there are some people yes. who do weather on TV, but they yeah. don't necessarily have the degree. And to they do it. might not understand the science as much, which makes right. it more difficult to explain it to mm -hmm. everyone at home. Yeah. yeah. And I think you might've just explained this, but why is weather called meteorology? Yeah. It, that is the study of the weather around you. Basically. It's just the, the fancy title it gets. Like if you go to a doctor who's talking about bones and joints, they're an orthopedic surgeon. Um, a meteorologist studies the weather. And so mm -hmm. that is that is the fancy title. So, you know, what was interesting when Maya brought this cloud project home, she told me, hey, mom, I can predict the weather. And she goes and looks at the window and she looks at the clouds and she said, it's going to be nice for the next two days. So they've learned a little bit about this, but how do you know what the weather will be like? Are you, you using instruments? What tools? Your eyeballs? Yeah. So nowadays, um, a lot of it is done with computer models. Um, so those computer models, though, are taking information that's coming in from instruments, from weather balloons, from satellites, from radars, uh, from thermometers that are placed around at strategic locations so you understand the temperatures and things like that. And all of that is input into these computer models, and it does give you options of what the forecast looks like. And there are lots of different computer models. So something that a meteorologist looks at oftentimes is which model is doing the best, which model is performing the best. And then you might start to believe that one over another one. But usually you're taking kind of an average of all of them and, and making your own decision about what you think is going to happen. One of the most important things though is looking outside <laughs> like Maya did. Right. Because that's critical. Um, you have to know. I mean, if I'm looking and the weather service says it's going to be cloudy all day, but I look outside and there's sunshine, and I don't see a cloud in the sky, you do have to take that into account. <laughs> so right. very, very good very point. Important. Very good point. Yeah. This may be my favorite question. How come clouds are white and not other colors like a rainbow? Yeah. So sunlight itself is white. Um, the cloud is made out of tiny little water droplets. So those are going to scatter a lot of those other colors 
away from where you're looking and the cloud itself is going to kind of pull in that white light of the sunshine. And so that's what you're going to see. And sometimes if you look at the bottom of a cloud, especially if it's like a really big cloud, they may look gray or even black. Um, there's just more water droplets inside of that. Um, and that scatters more of the color out and doesn't allow as much to filter through. And so the interesting thing about those clouds, when they're so gray like that, that's when you know it could potentially rain because a cloud is like a sponge. If you get too much water in a sponge, it starts to drip, right? Same thing. That's rain, basically. Mm -hmm. What are some weather records for Minnesota okay. besides I have to look this at my winter? Phone because I didn't winter. know those offhand, Erin. Okay. Well, while you look that up, well, I've got them for you right here. I see. Well, you did it. have them. Okay. Sorry. Go yeah. ahead. I just need to look down. Um, okay. So <laughs> the maximum temperature was July 29th, 1917 in Beardsley, and it was 115 degrees. Oof. So that's the max temp. The minimum was minus 60 degrees, and that was near Tower, and that was back in 1996. So some of your parents will know that, maybe, or remember that. That was 60 degrees below zero. Um, and the most snowfall in one 24-hour period was near Finland, and that was in 1994, 36 inches. And that was a 24-hour period. Um, but the maximum snowfall for a season, meaning how much snow came during the winter season, so that's after summer, and then when the snow stops in the end of spring for you guys sometimes was 170 inches. Yeah, and I, I think we're pretty close to that I, <laughs> this winter like already. You, you feel like it for sure. What are safety tips for different kinds of weather in Minnesota? Megan, yeah. you were always big on safety. You always yeah. were a proponent of people getting the NOAA weather radios. What else? No weather radio, super important. That would go off no matter what for you. I mean, your cell phones, your parents' cell phones will do a pretty good job now of giving you uh, tornado warnings and things like that. Um, really what we like to say is just to be weather aware. That means know what the forecast is. And if there is a chance of thunderstorms on a particular day, then you know you may need to pay a little bit more attention to what's going on around you. Um, another saying that um, a woman we used to work with, Erin Mary Kay, used to always say, when thunder roars, go indoors. That means if you hear thunder, it's time to not be playing outside anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's a really important thing to remember because thunder and lightning can strike from, I mean, thunder you're going to hear, lightning can strike from really far away. So if you hear thunder, there is lightning creating that and you need to go inside. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of snow, it's really just to be dressed for the elements. You need to be dressed for the right kind of weather and pay attention. If it's snowing really, really hard, it's not the best time to go for any kind of a travel in the car uh, and things like that. In terms right. of really cold, you have to be, once again, dressed for the weather. And if it's too cold, you got to just stay inside, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know science was a big part of your job. What was your schedule getting a weather forecast ready for the morning news? Okay. So I would get in super duper early in the morning. What um, time? But it was usually about 3. 3 a.m. Yeah. Do hair, do makeup, um, and then go sit down. And sometimes I'd reverse the order. But um, sit down and basically look at all the weather models. Um, look at what the meteorologist from the night before had forecasted so we could have a consistent forecast, like, you know, so that I could take what he did and work down into what I was doing or what she did. Um, so that's really important. And then take a look at those models and make your decision about how you think the weather is going to be that day. What do you think is really going to happen? And so there is a lot of science to it, but there's no right answer. Um, and that's the hard part because sometimes you're going to be wrong. It happens and it's not necessarily always easy to be wrong, but it, it certainly occurs often. <laughs> and people like hard to, to be right about it. Yeah. Is it scary to be on TV? No, you know, I guess maybe at first it was scary. Uh, not so much scary, but that exciting feeling when you get butterflies and you are like, oh man, here we go. Like that kind of feeling. Nervous, I think. maybe, yeah. Nervous, excited. Um, and then eventually you get very used to it and you don't quite feel like that anymore. Mm -hmm. But when there's big weather, tornadoes or things like that, um, that's still exciting and in a good slash bad way. So that still gets you really kind of nervous yeah. sometimes. I always say it's okay to be nervous. Nerves yeah. give you an edge. That's how I always felt about it's it. True, It's true. How do you get to be on TV? What do you have to study to be a journalist or meteorologist? Okay. Journalist, you could study journalism or, or you whatever you want. English, it really or doesn't matter. Law. 
Um, I was an English and Spanish major. Yeah. And I studied journalism and then also um, atmospheric sciences because I wanted to talk about the weather. So nowadays it, it helps to have like a special thing that you can talk about. So I said, maybe you go to law school and then you can be the legal consultant for a TV station, or you can be the medical consultant because you were a nurse or a doctor and you decide you want to be on TV. Lots of ways to do it. Um, but generally speaking, journalism or atmospheric sciences will get you on the weather. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like being on TV though, is one of those skills that you really only learn by doing. And so it's yeah. one of those things where if you can, you know, figure it out on the job, sometimes that's enough. Yep. Last question. How did you get interested in being on TV? I was always a ballerina and I liked to like perform, you know, I like to dance on stage and all that stuff. And so I think for me, it was a natural, how can I keep performing even once I'm a grown up? Um, and that was a great way for me to be able to do that because it still let me, uh, kind of put on a show to a certain degree, but also required a lot of science, which I loved and I loved the weather. So those things just kind of went hand in hand and it was a really fun career for a really long time. Um, until waking up in the morning gets really difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One o'clock. Any other in the advice for our really first does. graders who are watching? Then Meg, what'd you say? Any other advice for the first graders? Just to do something that you really love and don't worry about it yet, because you might change your mind 15 million times between now and going to college or graduating high school or whatever you decide to do. So try to just in this time figure out what you like best and then go with that, and just make sure what you're doing makes you happy. Yeah. Try yeah. all the things too. Okay. Yep. Megan, thank you. Bye, Mrs. Drilling's class. Bye guys.